Scott! What a bullet! Scott Arfield! He's been threatening that recently! And all the Burnley players run to the Darwin end! Burnley win the next ball. It's Rory now. It's on the outside. He's on the Quickly finds Benson in space at the byline. Can Burnley get a goal here? Back for Brownell. Saved by the keeper. Yeah! Burnley won it to the end. That is magnificent. They deserve that. Only by Paul Fatella. Off for a hat trick. He's got it. Hat trick for Nathan Teller. Oh, he's on fire at the minute. 3 0 Burnley. It's Nathan Teller's day. And Burnley are three. Can he go on the outside? Comes inside. Comes up a shot. Oh, what a goal! Manuel Benson once more. That is top class. Burnley have done it. Fantastic. Clarence deserves the championship title. They've been the best side throughout the campaign. Burnley have won the second tier. What a fantastic achievement. The players have been magnificent. Yes, hello everyone and welcome along to the latest instalment of the Turfcast podcast pre-game show with me, Joe Redmond, ahead of Thursday night's game down at the Hawthorns, West Bromwich Albion against Burnley. Obviously, everybody's expecting this to be a free-flowing, brilliant attacking game of football with two teams that can't stop putting the back of the ball into the back of the net. Am I on the right pod? Yeah, (laughs) obviously I'm being sarcastic. Two teams struggling to score, but also two teams that don't concede a lot of goals. And you thought we were bad in terms of scoring goals and being tedious. Just looking at West Brom's last five results. 0-0, 1-1, 0-0, 0-0, 1-1. I was very similar though. But obviously you've already heard the voice. If you're watching on the YouTube channel, you'll already be able to see Chris from Albion Analysis. How are you doing, mate? Yeah, not too bad, mate. Not too bad. To be fair, I don't, I don't think we've been. I, I, I mean, it's not been great, but I, uh, but the the results don't quite sort of. Um, it's not been quite as tedious as the results would uh, would suggest. Um, some of them have not been not been brilliant, um, but I mean, the Cardiff game at least for forty five minutes was fairly entertaining. It's just you know they shut up shop in the in in the second half, but yeah, we really are struggling in front of goal. Yeah, well. Preaching to the choir, mate. Um, our results do look as tedious as, as the actual performance is, by the way. Um, but anyway, let's get into you, uh, West Brom. Talk to me about West Brom. Talk to me about your season so far, mate, because I'm just looking at your results. The first five results are all very good. Obviously, a, a, a draw at home to Leeds on the opening day, four wins in a row, followed by a couple of defeats. And then five draws in a row. So talk to me about your season so far. You, please, you missed our opening day win at QPR there, actually. At oh, that I'm sorry. I'm looking. Yeah, I've only, sc- I've only, I've only scrolled down to to Fleetwood. I saw that. And I'm like, that must be a friendly. Obviously, it's no, EFL, that was our League Cup defeat. That. It was yeah. a bit embarrassing that one. But to be fair, it was our, our second string. Look, it's it's. It's been one of them, hasn't it? We, we as you say, we uh, we started the uh, the season really well. Um, we 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 were that we were all aboard HMS Walk the League um, after six games, and you know the the next seven we haven't won a single one. Um, it's a funny one because, as I say, everybody was uh, was on cloud nine, sort of um, uh, saying we're the best team ever after six games. After the following seven. In some Albion fans' eyes, were awful, and Corbrand should go. And not not many right-minded, or I I would say moderate Albion fans. I think it's the sort of like um, the the vo- vocal minority that are suggesting things like that. But the reality is, the truth is somewhere in the middle. We're we're neither of those things. We're we're not we're not a top two side, but we're not you know we're not a seven games without a win type team as well. I, I would suggest that in those particularly looking at the last five draws, I would suggest we've been the best better side in the vast majority of those. Probably you could make a fair case for Luton was slightly better than us on on Friday night over the course of the piece. Um, but 
I mean, part of that was down to the fact that we went 1-0 up and obviously you defend a lead from there. But, uh, you know, you look back at the other ones, Cardiff, we... we, we we battered them. We just uh, in the first half. Okay, they hit the top of the bar, but they 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 only had um, five shots in the whole game, which is the least anybody's had against us all season. Um, we we had chance after chance in that first half. Missed some absolute sitters. Uh, didn't score, and and basically Omaritza re- realised at half time that if it carried on like that, that they were going to get battered. He changed his tactics. He he tightened up a little bit, and we didn't have as much joy in the second half. Blackburn, you know we. we it, it was a fairly turgid, even game, but uh, both our fullbacks have had one-on-ones with the goalkeeper and missed the target in the first half. And in the second half, um, there's a really, really, what I think is a really obvious penalty when Todd Cantwell's pushed Darnell Furlong over. So, you know, I haven't a bit of seen it, mate, but it were against Blackburn, so it was a definite penalty. It was a well, definite was penalty, worse. yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, th- there's that one. Oxford, obviously, we get done in the last minute by a long throw and, uh, to be honest, yeah, Millwall at that. home was literally as turgid as it looks. It was they 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 came for a point. They they parked um, two buses side by side, and then stacked two buses on top of that, and uh, and and we just we couldn't find a way through. So we, we're probably largely having the better of most of these not particularly great games. Um, we're just. We're just a bit toothless in front of goal. We've only had four different players score for us all season. And it's mm. it's pretty much the case. If Josh Mazur doesn't knock it in the back of the net, nobody will. Yeah. it's Honestly, you, you could be describing us some of the things you've said there, like teams coming and shutting up shop. You know, toothless, toothless is the word that we've been using as Burnley fans recently to describe us in front of goal. And just to describe us in the final third, because we're not even creating chances. If you look at the XG, mm. Obviously, I've just sent you some answers on WhatsApp. Or you probably won't have a chance to read it yet because I literally... I, I saw you've predicted a nil-nil, which, yeah. which, which I have to say I smiled at. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, I, you know, I've put a stat in there. I can't remember the stat exactly, so apologies if it is a little wrong. But uh, over the last five games, I think it is, we've created the least XG in the entire EFL. So, you know, it's not even a case of we're creating chances and the strikers aren't putting them away. You know, like you mentioned there, some one-on-ones that you've missed. We're, we're not even getting that at the minute. Uh, but we'll get into us in a, bit, in, a, in a bit later. And we'll get into predictions later, but you've already told everybody. But I'll stand by that prediction for later. Um, obviously, as we've already mentioned, your season's kind of in two parts. The good start and then the... The, de- the defeats that then then followed the good start and then and then the draws the you know the low scoring draws has there been a difference in performances or is it as a case of teams are, are setting up differently against you what what's the difference a little bit of both to be honest with you I mean we we we, we had the um we had pretty much the same starting 11 for the first six games I think we had to make we had to make one change against Plymouth because of an injury to uh, Jason Malumbi but other than that I think uh, I think 10 of the 11 uh, starters were the same for those first six games and then we had a little bit of an injury crisis in central midfield um, ahead of uh, Sheffield Wednesday and we put in two new signings Ratchich and Diakate and got battered in the first half they were both absolutely terrible um, and Sheffield Wednesday just ran rough shot over us in the middle of the park and we we, we went we went 2-0 down and um to be honest we're probably a little bit glad to get in 2-0 down um there and then uh, and and then came back in that game because we we basically brought dear Kate off brought a half fit Alex Mowat on and realized that half fit Alex Mowat was better than a, than a fully fit uh, Usman dear Kate on that particular day and uh, you know, got it back to two two, and then chuck the chuck the game away at, at the end. And I, I don't know. From from there, we've just kind of we've just we've lacked a little bit of little bit of uh, confidence. I think you know we, we we're we're the one side that Middlesbrough's managed to a keep it tight against and b take their chance. Um, yeah. They seem they 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 seem although I, I know they're winning tonight against QPR, but they seem to have been uh, just missing chance after chance against everybody else but Hayden Hackney smashes one in against us it that was a game that could have gone could have gone either way but to be honest um after the nil nil draw with Millwall we've just looked to be honest we looked a little bit nervous and we've looked a little bit a little bit edgy you know the, the uh, we we don't tend to when we go ahead we don't tend to throw wins, uh, throw throw leads away. We certainly don't tend to throw games away in the last minute, like we did against mm-hmm. Oxford. But you know, we just we we made so many mistakes in that game against Oxford. Like uh, even before the goal, just passing the ball across our own eighteen yard box. You know, really 
basic things that top top quality championship players shouldn't be doing in a million years and and that I don't see Albion players doing very often but we were playing ourselves into trouble time and again and Oxford kept letting us off the hook and then we made a bunch of mistakes that led up to the throw in um and and got and got sucker punched in the in the last minute and to be honest since then we've been we've been a bit on on the floor a little bit confidence wise particularly in front of goal you know, like I say Blackburn could have gone either way but I think we had enough in it to win it, but we didn't take our chances. Cardiff, yeah. we were just so profligate in front of goal. And Luton, I mean, was just a bizarre game. I don't know whether you watched it, but I mean, we, we at first bits. half, we were just launching the ball out of play every time it came anywhere near our 18-yard box. We looked we yeah. looked so on edge. So, uh, so I think with each game, you've just seen the confidence get chipped away at a little bit. And... And you know, I don't know. I don't know quite how Corbrand's going to build them back up for for Thursday night. Um, but uh, you know, I mean, I'm watching the watching the results going in tonight, and I was uh, I was almost looking past your game a little bit to Hull on Sunday and thinking, well, they're in an even worse state than we are, and and maybe that will be the one where we'll just kind of get the result. But they're probably going to sack their blooming manager um, in in the morning, and and then and and then you know. Uh, Lord knows on on that one. So I, I I don't know. I don't really know what to what to expect from us at the moment. I think we're still doing a lot of the right things, and we're still defending pretty well, as is shown by the fact that we might not be scoring goals. But as you said at the top of the show, we're not conceding many either. We have you know we've kept three clean sheets in our last five as well. So yeah, it, it, we we are doing some of the right things. We've just got zero confidence in front of goal, except for Josh Majru scores back heels. Yeah. Um, obviously, you've alluded to it there a couple of times. Uh, we are recording this on the 5th of November, Bonfire Night, so some of the results are just tickling in now. Just before we got started, I was talking to Chris saying, like, I'm happy with the Bristol City result. They're beating Sheffield United. But just before we went on air, Sheffield United equalised, and I was like, for God's sake, I can't believe, they, I can't believe they've equalised. I've just gone on to look at it now. They, uh, look at it now. they won it in the 98th minute. Oh, so Sheffield United have won, so that's not great for us. But I guess for you guys, you'll be happy with that one because Bristol City will have lost. So that puts Sheffield United on 28 points in second. So if Burnley want to be keeping yeah. tabs on the top two, we're going to need to be winning games. I'm sort of looking. I, 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 you know, I mean, look, I don't want to, don't want to sound like mega negative, but after seven, seven games without a win, it's hard to, it's hard to sort of sound too upbeat. I, I am looking down the table a little bit more than I'm looking up it, to be honest. And yeah. you've got a team in like Sheffield United who, who tonight have gone second and um, beating a team in in Bristol City who could have gone above us if they'd won tonight. I, I can't say I'm unhappy with that, and it kind of it just shows you where our mentality is at the at the moment. That I'm I'm looking down the table at the teams in tenth, eleventh, you know, uh, uh, as to how how they're getting on, rather than worrying about you know the the the, the five teams that that are above us: Sunderland, Sheffield United, Leeds, yourselves, and Watford, and not really concerning myself with with how anybody above us is get is getting on. It's you know because because you. After seven without a win, you just don't pack your team to win. Yeah. No, that, that's fair enough. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how the season plays out, that's for sure. Fingers crossed we can stay, not necessarily above you, but in the sort of position and around where we are, because uh, I think Leeds and Sheffield United are now starting to look strong. Obviously, Sunderland's still ticking along. I do still think they'll fade. Every time I put that on Twitter, I get loads of Sunderland fans kicking off at me. Um, but I do think they'll fade. Um, I think Sheffield United and Leeds might be the two teams that we should be worrying about. Anyway, obviously, you've kind of already alluded to it already. Some sections of the fan base are being a bit negative towards Carlos Corbran, your manager. What's your thoughts on it? Obviously, you alluded to it saying that, you know, the, the vocal minority. So, obviously, that, that tells me that you're still backing the manager. Oh, 100%. I mean, look, it's it's seven it's seven without a win, it, but it's also the longest... Uh, run. I mean, three games, uh, four games is the longest run we'd had without without a win before this. You know, so he, 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 this is fairly unprecedented. He's been he's been our manager. Um, we're in November now, so he's been our manager two years. Um, like this is the first time he's had anything close to a really bad run. I, I don't, I don't get it. I, I, you know, look, it's not, it's not just, it's not just Albion fans. It's football fans generally. Everybody is so trigger happy. The solution is always sack the manager. It's, it's change, change, change all the time. You know, and 
and, and you know, fo- the football culture, and it, it, you know, it, it stems from owners as well. Not fortunately, not ours, because I think we've got a very, very good, intelligent, and patient owner who, uh, who I don't think will go anywhere near the um, the the big red button. I, I, I really don't. I don't. I don't see see it for the life of me. But you know, there's clubs just turn over managers now at such a rate, and you think. How on earth does anyone have any opportunity to build anything? Carlos Corbran has worked miracles for the last two seasons. He took us from the bottom of the league to within one game of the playoffs. And then whilst having to lose his captain and our best defender to you guys the next uh, the next summer, um, for, to be honest, a fairly moderate fee, um, given what you then sold him on to for Ipswich as well, um, you know, we 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 went uh, and not having any money to reinvest mm. in the squad at all, not a penny. He took us to fifth in the league and a playoff semi final, and people still moan that we got beaten up by Southampton, who had a Premier League squad and you know a millions of pounds worth of players and had been able to spend big money and big wages in the summer when we hadn't. And you think, what, what do people actually expect? And we started this season well. And we are still at time of recording in six. Um, and OK, we're on a bad run of form. But we also brought in 11 players in the summer. He's trying to bed them in. We, we we let go a lot of players who played a lot of games for us last season. Connor Townsend was virtually ever present at left back. When Okaya Koslu was fit, he was always playing in central midfield. Brandon Thomas Asante was our, our lead striker and top scorer. All of those got, went out the door. And, you know, we're, we're building something a bit different. It started well, but to be honest, we were a little bit one-dimensional and teams have found us out a little bit. Our threat was our wide men and teams have worked out that if you stop, do your best to stop Grant and Fellows, you probably largely stop Albion because they, the, particularly Fellows was the one feeding Mazur the vast majority of the time. So, mm. you know, we, we've, we basically, Corbrand's worked out that he needs to find different ways to to win games. It's not quite happening at the moment, but we're only drawing games. I mean, we've lost two all season. That's, you know, that's, that's less than, or, or or, uh, less or the same as everybody in the league, except Leeds. Like how, how is, how is that bad? Okay. Five draws on the spins, not brilliant, but it's better than losing them. And sooner or later draws turn into either wins or losses. And I honestly do think, Corbrand is such a good manager that they will turn into wins. I'm not terribly confident it will be Thursday. I was kind of hoping it would be Sunday, but if Tim Volta gets the the tin tack, then I, I possibly think that 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 might be less likely. But you know, sooner or later, we are a decent side with a good manager, and as long as the fans stick by him, and as long as the owner stands by him, uh, he'll turn it. He'll turn it around. But no, at the moment we're not brilliant. But I've got I've got no. I I I am unwavering in my belief and support of Carlos Corbran. Yeah, no, it's fair enough, and it, and it's good to hear as well because we're in the midst of a lot of uh, a, a lot of our fans after just two defeats this season. Admittedly, we have different ambitions to yourselves, and you know different sort of like money and things like that. So I can understand why the frustration is a little bit more from our part, but similar sort of thing like there's a lot of fans losing the red now after 13 games of the season and two defeats and, and look at the squad turnover you guys had you know exactly and, and, that as well. i mean and it's a new project it's a new manager i mean look vinny company played a very very specific different style of football it's you know i'm uh, look i've ne- I'll, I'll be honest cards on the table i've never been the biggest fan of uh, of scott parker um, although i didn't uh, i didn't i didn't uh, i didn't uh, say that to him when he was queuing behind me uh, um uh, in um uh, uh, in passport control on his way to interview for your job yeah can i just um, say actually thank you for that because you sent me that <laughs> picture i tweeted it and then it went yeah. not viral but you know it did very well so my roving reporter on the ground thank you for that mate <laughs> yes yeah, so he was leaving alba Ferrers, he was leaving faro airport in, in I'd, I'd just been on my stag do, so uh, yeah, we 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 were, we were on our on our way back, feeling a little bit tender, and we were just like, "Is that Scott Parker?" Um, but but yeah, it was um, it, it was it was odd, but it was very clear he was off to interview for a job because he got a he got an Armani sort of like suit carrier thing with him. So, yeah. um, it, but but it, yeah, look, I've never been I've never necessarily been his been his biggest fan. I I've, but 
and and I do think there's an element where he's had he's always had incredibly strong squads to work with at this level and I, I, I feel like he's kind of he's got them over the line in less than impressive fashion, but you've still got to give him credit for the fact that he's got them over the line. Um, in the end, promotion is a promotion is a promotion, even if it's, even if he sort of stumbled over the line a couple of times, he's still got them there. And yeah, he's building something new at Burnley. I just, I just think, as I say, it's not, not a go at Albion fans, not a go at Burnley fans. My, my take is that just football fans collectively, are win now, 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 and there's n- the uh, and and actually the reality is, y- you look at the the real success in football, the long term success, and it comes it comes from longevity, not from being transient with your managers and and changing them uh, at, at the first drop of any any bad results. We just talked about Hull there, like you know, where 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 is chopping and changing got them? You know, it's it. What Watford are up and down like a flipping yo-yo. You don't you don't know what they're going to be any 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 one season uh, to the next. Chelsea are, are all over. I mean, they're better this season, but they're all over the gaff. Whereas whereas you stick with someone like Coventry did with Mark Robbins, and it it actually gets you somewhere. You know, uh, Luton Nathan Jones built the the foundations for their success. Again, Burn, it's, it's Burnley and Sean Dash. Well, yeah, Burnley and Burnley and Sean Dyche. This, this is what I mean. You can you you can go through you you can go through any one of a any one of a number of managers. But I I think I'm right in saying that Carlos Corbran, at two years almost to the day, is the second longest serving manager in the Championship, behind a man who got That's his mad. job a week before him, Michael Carrick. <laughs> That's mad. Which is mad. Yeah. yeah, it's not it's not right, is it? No, it just shows, like you say, how quickly. Um, owners push the big red button as uh, as you said it. Um, style of play. Talk to me more about your style of play. How can we expect West Brom to set up on Thursday against us? I mean, I think it'll be. I think it'll be four at the back. I think it'll be. Um, I think it will be two. Um, the probably two midfielders who aren't really sitting midfielders. They're they're, they're ball players um, in there to try and sort of. Um, progress the ball forward um i think it'll probably be a number 10 um with two wingers whose job it is to get further forward than than the center forward and mm. uh, and tuck in a little bit and i think it'll be it'll be major up front who will out of possession drop into the 10 and sort of like help with build up and uh, and then we'll get in the box afterwards i think that's pretty clear in terms of how we will actually approach the game I don't know because it's been, as I say, it's been it's been a little bit, it's been a little bit all over the show, to be honest. Um, in 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 recent in recent weeks, um, Luton was a completely different approach to anything I've seen from us before. It was complete fear of the the Luton press, and it was just it was just clear the ball and go long at every given opportunity that we possibly could. Blackburn was different as well. We 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 started. It was like. The key tactic there seemed to be to get our defenders actually beyond and uh, as sort of extra men in the box. And as I say, our two best chances of the game fell to our two fullbacks. And then, and then probably our next best chance from open play was a flash ball across the box, which from open play, which our centre half Paddington there was throwing himself at. So that was different. Um, Cardiff again was uh, was was a was a little bit was a little bit different and it was it, it was there was a there, there was a decent set piece threat in in there as well and um and it was very much built around let's get let's get shots off in the box let's get shots off um closer in whereas against oxford we were we were shooting from distance i it, it's it's like it's like we're we we we're, we're trying clothes on at the moment and trying to find the stuff that fits and suits us um yeah uh, you know, because uh, first first five games, I could have told you to the uh, first six games, I could have told you to the T what our game plan would have been because it was the same week in, week out. And then, as I say, we just we got snuffed out and teams have kind of worked us out a little bit. And Corbran is trying different stuff to try and work it out. So I'm, I'm pretty confident that will be the shape. And, you know, I could... I'm not sure I could give you the the, the, the starting eleven because he's chopped and changed it around, but I think he'll go back to Fellows and Grant as the wide men, Major, 
uh, Masha through the middle. The back four fits, picks itself because it's basically our only forfeit defenders, um, you know, it, it, which is Furlong, Holgate, Hegem and Styles because he doesn't seem to like Frobotta. Um And then it will be in midfield, it will be three out of, well, Moat will definitely play. And then it will be two others out of um, Ratchich, Swift, Malumbi, and Dean Garner. But, but but which two of those four it will be, I'm I'm not completely sure. Fair enough. Obviously, you've just gone through some of your team there. Which are the players that you think are most likely to hurt Burnley? I'm going to guess on on some of the things that you've already spoken about. It's Madger uh, and potentially Fallows as well. Well, Tom Fellows has had a real, as I say, he when we talk about us being found out, I think him becoming such a marked man has been a, has been a real problem for us. And I think, I think he's he's been doubled up on a lot. He's um, he's largely been stopped so uh, in recent weeks. So, I mean, look, if he has a good game, he is one of the best wide right players in this division. But he. To be fair to Tom, and he's he's still a young player. He's you know he, he's he's really in his first full season of uh, of Championship football now because he only really came into the side after the FA Cup third round game last year. Um, so he's still developing, but he's not in the best of form. I, I mean, Mazur is the obvious threat because uh, he scored the vast majority of of our goals, um, but. Carlin Grant is the other one who is offering a real attacking threat. He's been completely rejuvenated this season uh, after his loan at Cardiff, and we all thought his Albion career was done. Um, and he's just come back a different animal. He looks stronger. He looks more committed. Um, and like the Albion fans have kind of uh, fallen in, fallen in love with him uh, uh, again. To, uh, to, I never thought I, I never I, I never thought I'd, I'd hear an Albion crowd singing his name, let alone dancing around a, a stand singing Carlin effing Grant Ale Ale. To be honest, uh, but uh, that's what I'm hearing at the moment. He's you know he, he's really sort of inspired the uh, the, the Albion fans, but. Yeah, th- those are the two, and, and, and Moat will pull the strings in midfield. Um, they're probably yeah, yeah. they're probably our three experience. most effective players at the moment. Yeah, fair enough. Um, predictions, then, please, mate. What are your pred- you you've already told everybody mine, so I'll I'll tell everybody mine now. Nil nil. Um, and and the thing that does worry me about what you've what you said earlier is when we tend to go ahead, we don't tend to throw away games. My worry is when we go behind. We don't tend to get back into games. Like we showed absolutely no desire whatsoever against Millwall on Sunday to get back into that game. We didn't have a shot on target, I don't think, in the second half. The XG was like 0.17 for the entire game, and at 0.09 after going behind. It was just not good enough. So if you do go ahead and then you kind of like sit back a little bit, it, the three points are yours, mate. But um, what's your prediction? Uh, I don't know. I, I can I can see it being I can see it being another one one. To be honest, I mean if we, uh, but if I mean if if we go to if we go to eight draws, um, uh, sorry, if we go to six draws on the spin, I, I honestly am going to have to go back through the record books and find out because I, I had to go back twenty five years to find the last time we drew, we drew five on the spin. So uh, so six is going to be is going to be ridiculous. But I, I don't know. I do think I do think it's it it. It's it's almost got the feels of a draw beforehand. I, I feel like it's got the feels of a score draw. I think we're we're just we're just in the last couple of games. We're just starting to show the little shoots of of recovery in terms of in terms of goals. A lot of chance, uh, enough, plenty of chances against Cardiff, and then obviously getting the goal against Luton and Devante Cole having a bicycle kick saved in the last minute and stuff. I uh, I, I feel like. As little shoots of recovery in front of goal there, but I can also see. I feel like Burnley have got that. Some, you, you, you're right. You might not create a lot in front of our goal, but the way things are going for us at the moment, I can just see one of one of your more technical players pulling the trigger from 25 yards and it just flashing I'd love into to the see top that, corner. Mate. I'd love to see. I'd love to see him shoot from 25 yards. To be fair, yeah. although to be fair, Hontondre had a shot from a bit of a distance against Millwall, but other than that, we didn't really do too much. There were a couple of flashes here and there. Coley Orshaw went through and, and made the wrong choice, like he always does. He's a good player. Is Coley Orshaw? He's getting a lot of stick at the minute. 
it because he has been poor for a while. But he's very, very young. He gets in behind defenders sometimes, runs at defenders, gets in behind them. Then he'll just make the wrong choice. He'll shoot when he's meant to pass and he'll go near post when he's meant to go far post. But he's but he's a kid, he, you know, he's, and, I, and I think he's got a bit of a, you know, uh, some stick from fans recently, but fingers crossed he plays on on Thursday. Fingers crossed he plays on the left and not on the right. Scott Parker, if you're watching, it's definitely not. But play him in his natural position, please. Um, and then maybe you know somebody like Adji or Sarmiento, or, or I'd even try Anthony on the right. Anthony's not oh, done that well I recently. You, I forgot you got Jeremy. Oh, he he is one hundred percent. Oh yeah. Going to come inside. Oh, yeah. he's forgot about oh, that. Uh, uh, I, I right. would have asked you specifically it, about him. It, so please let me what, know more about him. Yeah, now, no, I mean, on him. honestly, it, well, one one of the most frustrating players I've seen down the Hawthorns at the uh, in a long time. Look, he was, it, it, he, it, you know, he was. Um, it, it, it was it was all tricks and no no end product to be honest a lot of the time Other, except for when he you know when he scored a couple of goals he scored a brilliant um, goal against I think it was uh, the fourth against Middlesbrough and he cut inside against Cardiff and won a, won a game um, at the at the Cardiff City Stadium with an absolute worldie in in a dreadful game which you know it was that was the only way anybody was going to win it but. He was just, he was so inconsistent. He ran down, a, I mean, a bit like what you were saying about Carly Osho there, ran down a lot of blind alleys for us. Um, just, just didn't, just didn't really, he, he didn't, he also, I mean, Corbrand's very much needs players to play for the team. And it, it, it seemed like Sarmiento was far more interested in playing for himself than, than, uh, than the rest of the team. But, the fact that he might not necessarily get the best reception and the fact that um, uh, that, that we didn't see the best of him just, just leads me to believe that we absolutely will see the best of him um, on, on Thursday night. So, yeah, I, I, if, there was, if there was one thing that uh, were I to be a betting man that I would be absolutely putting money on, it would be Jeremy Sarmiento as an anytime goal scorer without a shadow of a doubt. Mate, um, I'd love it, obviously, for my personal reasons, um, but I've... He's looked okay. Like, you know, he's a year on now from when he was at loan with you guys. He's looked okay. Had a decent half of the season last season at Ipswich as well. He's looked okay. He looks more of an impact player rather than a starting player. But just because of how poor we've been on the wings recently, I'd be switching it around a bit. I'd be starting Sarmiento on the right or Antony, um, probably Sarmiento, and then Coley Osho on the left and hopefully uh, Zion Fleming in the 10 role where he belongs in an actual striker as a striker, but we'll see. Um, we'll start to wrap it up there, mate. But before we do, can I get your prediction, please, mate? I know you've said uh, under a certain amount of goals. What did you actually say? Your actual? I think score? one one is what is what is what I've I've got a plump for. But yeah, score draw. You went for didn't yeah, you? Yeah, um, uh, one one one. Uh, us us to go ahead with uh, with a major goal, and then uh, and then probably late doors. Sarmiento to come off the bench and just pearl one in the top corner. Mate, I think a lot. I think if you go ahead, a lot of Burnley fans will be switching the telly off if if they're there walking out. Um, there's been a few people, and I, for one, and I know a friend of mine has said this recently, and and he might think this is a dig at him. It's not because I've seen a few people say this. Uh, some Burnley fans said after the second defeat of the season, by the way, against Millwall, that they're not going on again until Scott Parker has been sacked. And that is a ridiculous comment. We've lost two games all season, but. If we go 1-0 down, a lot of these fans, for example, will be, will be straight on his back, turning the telly off, leaving the match. Um, I'm one of them fans through thick and thin. I'll be there no matter what. If we get relegated, we're obviously not going to do it, but I'll be there in League One. Um, so it is what it is. Uh, before we do wrap it up, mate, do you want to let everyone know where they can find you on the socials and, and digest all your West Bromwich Albion content, please? Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, look, Albion analysis wherever you find uh, find your podcasts. You know the usual stuff: Spotify, Apple, uh, Apple Podcasts. Um, just because of our ridiculous schedule this week, unfortunately, we, uh, we're going to have to bundle together the Burnley and Hull game. So, if you do have some desperate need to hear our side of the sort of story, um, you, you, you uh, unfortunately you'll have to wait till after the Hull game because um, you know just yeah, the, the Thursday night. I mean. Cheers, Sky. Yeah, thanks for that. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it. it's ridiculous. Well, and the fact that Hull have played tonight as well, by the way, and uh, and and that we've got um, we've got Friday and Saturday to recover for a game on Sunday, and they've got um, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I mean, come on, really? Absolutely. Same for us. We play we play Swansea, but we play Swansea on 
Um, Sunday, um, but obviously Swansea are playing tonight. Uh, well, played, sorry, tonight. So, again, two games. But um, it was similar for us uh, when we played Blackburn. Apologies for swearing. Um, obviously, we played them Saturday morning, I think. Well, Saturday afternoon, um, 12.30 kickoff. Uh, and we had played on Wednesday, whereas their game was on Thursday. So, the EFL always throws up these conundrums. But, Chris... Thank you. You've been a good guest. We've gone over the half an hour mark, which always is a good indication of how easy it is to talk to you. Sometimes I get to 25 <laughs> minutes and I might forget it. This guy ain't speaking, uh, but you are the opposite. Um, good talk, mate. Really do appreciate it. And I always like to end the podcast by saying good luck for the rest of the season, mate, but after you play us. <laughs> well, same back to same back to you guys. Like like I say, you know, um, hope it, uh, hope it goes well, and uh, I, I don't have to see uh, Scott Parker in too many airport w- waiting lounges in the in the near future with his uh, with his uh, suit bag over his shoulder. Yeah, fingers crossed, mate. Thank you for coming on. It's been a pleasure.